Today, I'm going to teach you to be the best salesperson you can be. I have personally closed contracts worth over $3 million with some of the biggest and most successful companies worldwide. From banks to pharmaceutical companies, from beer to dairy, you name it, I have experience selling to them. And today, I'm going to open up my cards and share some of the secrets I've learned along the way. Are you born with sales skills or is it something you can learn? The old nature versus nurture dilemma. Let's put that argument to bed once and for all. Some people are born with certain talents, sure. But if you don't invest into that talent and develop it, then you're not going to be competitive. Professional skills need to be honed and improved constantly. So don't get discouraged if you don't think you're a great salesperson. You can be and stick around until the end of this video for a small treat. Before I jumped into the startup world, I was a business consultant, a partner at a consulting firm based in Boston. I started out as an intern like most consulting jobs, worked my way up to analyst, junior consultant, consultant, senior consultant, and ultimately made partner. To be a partner at a consulting firm, you need to be a shark and bring in the big bucks. It was a high stress hunt or be hunted environment that put my sales skills to the test, but gave me an arsenal of tools that allowed me to bring in behemoth clients like Procter & Gamble, Carlsberg, Danone, Raiffeisen Bank, Bayer Pharmaceuticals, and many, many more. The first thing I learned on the job, which was a bit of a surprise for me, was that sales is not only about bringing in new clients. There are two main functions of any great salesperson, hunting and farming. Hunting is bringing in new clients to the portfolio. Farming is more about relationship building and nurturing clients to boost their lifetime value. My mentor has a great theory about this. Let's say you're the head of a church and you realize that donations have been dropping off. Do you A, start missionary work and try to bring in new churchgoers? B, try to re-engage churchgoers that have not been attending? Or C, try to get more donations from the churchgoers that are already attending your sermons. Well, missionary work is super, super expensive. Trying to bring in new clients or new users will increase your acquisition cost for sure. The B option also has expenses you will need to swallow. So C is the obvious choice. Farming client relationships is one of the most undervalued sources of revenue and probably one of the most profitable. I hunted one of my clients with a 20K training deal that two years later blossomed into a multi-million dollar contract across eight different countries. Should you invest time into farming all of your clients? No, a salesperson's main resource is time. You can only handle a certain amount of clients to hunt and farm. You have to be constantly aware of how much time you are spending on a certain deal and what the potential payout could be. To manage time versus payout, we would rank clients into two main categories, strategic and tactical. Strategic clients were usually multinational corporations with operations in different countries. This would mean that spending time nurturing that client relationship made sense. The sky was the limit in terms of revenue if it's a Fortune 500 company. Tactical Tactical clients were usually local market leaders or challengers. Since they only have operations in one country and their corporate structure was a bit more centralized, the revenue we could potentially generate was of course much smaller. This would also impact pricing. Strategic partners would usually get a better deal because of scale. I talked about farming a bit, but how do you actually nurture a client relationship? The first thing you need to understand is that the person in front of you is just that a person. They are not just another Zoom call. You need to make them feel two things right off the bat. Number one, they need to feel that they have your undivided attention and priority. It's a lot like going on a first date. To seal the deal on your date, your date needs to feel that in your eyes, they are the only person that exists in the world. A lot of salespeople are good at this, but they tend to drop off once the contract is signed. You need to maintain a high level of attention to detail throughout the entirety of your relationship with your clients if you hope to farm them. Number two, and this is a tough one, they have to feel that you know a little bit more than they do. Your client has to quickly realize that having a relationship with you can only add value. It's a thin line to walk. You want to be overconfident, 
but not a douche. A pro tip here, make sure you let your client take all of the credit for any value that you generate. Let them be the shining star, the hero. Take a passive sage-like role and allow them to grow their reputation. This not only cements your relationship with your client, it also creates a value-based relationship, which means if they ever leave their current company, they will take you with them. I've had clients move from company to company and my portfolio only got bigger because of it. One of the things that we are taught in life is that everything is negotiable. Always keep in mind when you're chatting with a client that everything is negotiable. I learned this very early on in my career. After finishing my master's degree and working for a couple years, I applied to a business school to further my development. It was a super competitive MBA program and to be completely honest, my GPA wasn't the best. I got that dreaded rejection letter and I was like, what the I thought everything was negotiable. So I put that theory to the test. I boarded a plane, flew to the business school I applied, I negotiated my way into a meeting with the dean, and then I negotiated my way into the program. I finished second in my class with distinctions and started my consulting career. Negotiation is probably the key you need to learn if you're gonna be a good salesperson. You need to understand where you can add value to your clients and where you are willing to back down. Too many salespeople get caught up in negotiating price and that simply kills the deal. You should be negotiating value as much as possible. Focus on their upside and don't bring up money until they do. If you made it this far into the video, then first of all, thank you very much. And as I said before, a small treat. The most important sales tactic that we used to close deals was a simple truth. You need to be over prepared for all of your meetings. Closing a deal is 90% preparation and 10% execution. What we would usually do before a sales call or a meeting was to not only research the company, but we would research the person that we were meeting. Their online profiles, their college alumni page, any and all interviews they have given, basically anything we can find. I had a meeting at the World Economic Forum in Davos with a multi-billionaire. Our research was almost too detailed. We knew which boards he was on, which charities he supported. We even knew that his daughter had just graduated from an Ivy League school. I used all of this and his reaction was priceless. He said, well, it seems you have done your research. And with a complete poker face, I answered, well, now it's time for you to return the favor and do your research about us. Your clients have hundreds of sales calls a month. And if you want to stand out, you need to go above and beyond. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to help us out and hit that subscribe button. See you next week.